be able to have a nuanced conversation about what it means to be human, what it means to love, how we get to the progress and the process of becoming whole, healing, all of those things. And Kevin, we're going to have to pick up on being black men. We're going to have to pick up on Jada because I know you got to go. Uh, but before we went to break, uh, Dr. Daniel Black said, there's six steps before we even get to love. Five, uh, five steps. There's six steps to get to love. To I, love being the sixth. And, and this is what, what I mean. <laughs> And, and America teaches this in everything we do. It teaches in everything we do. For example, when folks were talking in the 70s, right, um, about the LGBTQ movement in America, right, and, and, and what you do with gay folks, folks did not start by saying, you, you love them, you see God in them. That's not what folks, folks mm. started by saying this thing of toleration, right? Can you just let them alone? Can you just let them exist and don't say nothing? People really thought that was an achievement. Mm. And we move from toleration to acceptance, right? And, and acceptance means, oh, can you actually speak and say good morning? <laughs> can you actually treat them like, like they could possibly be human beings, mm. right? Mm. And, 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 but acceptance is not love, right? And so, and, and so after acceptance, you move to this thing called respect, which means, oh my God, you might actually have a right to live. Wow. It really might be your God-given right to live like it is mine. Oh my God, I just realized that. You might actually have the right to live. And then after, but that still is not love. That is not love. As we all know, you can respect a person and not love them at all. Whew. That's not love. We move from respect to honor. Hmm. Honor really is, I'm going to treat you like I treat myself. Yes. Yes. And that still is not love. No, sir. Because most people don't treat me like you treat you. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Please don't treat me like you treat yourself. That's not excellence. But then you got to see, you got to do honor before you do love. Because mm. what is love? Love is if I have to lose to exalt you, I will lose. Damn. So that's five knots, which is good because I hate six. <laughs> if I have to lose, so troublesome. if it makes me lose for you to be exalted, I'm happy to lose. Mm. And see, what you were talking about earlier, Karen, now comes full circle. And this is why most people can't get to love, because we love power. That's it. That's it. We love power. And That's in loving power, in loving power, I'm never willing to lose. Mm. I'm never willing to lose. I will let you die before I lose. Woo. What most people don't know is love's guarantee is that if you lose in order to exalt me, you will be, you will be immediately, immediately gain. This is what Dr. King was teaching, and this is why America killed him. Because mm. mm. what Dr. King was teaching was that, listen, I don't have to win. I don't have to, ha I don't have, to have money. I don't have to have anything. What I want is human souls exalted. That's it. That's it. This, oh my God. Sorry, Dr. Black. No. <laughs> That's it. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. I mean, y'all feel me. A, a thousand percent, sir, because there is a moment in Killers of the Flower Moon where the indigenous people say, when we swapped our value system for someone else's value system, that's when we got in trouble, you know, because our value system, you know, one of the things I say in the essay I got coming about Killers of the Flower Moon, I talk about my introduction to indigenous people who we call the American Indian or Indians, you know, that derogatory term was that whole mythology of they sold Manhattan Island for $24 in trinkets. What they left out of the conversation is indigenous people said the earth belongs to everyone. They know what Dr. Black just said, Karen, five steps to love, tolerate, acceptance, respect, honor, love. If I can piggyback on number five, love, what I've always said is that love is a spiritual act. You know, again, this is that this doesn't have to do with organized religion. You could be Jewish, Christian, Muslim, you could be atheist, agnostic. But 
Love is a spiritual act, which is I want for you, Karen, and you, Dr. Black, exactly what I would want for myself. If you're hungry, then I need to split what I have in half and give it, share it with you. That's love. You know what I mean? My wife and I talk about our marriage, our relationship. What does love need to look like when we come from a world where people don't tolerate, nor accept, nor respect, nor honor, but talking about they love each other? And see, religions are not going to get us to love. No. No, no. Religions are not going to get us to love. <laughs> and I'm a Christian saying this, Dr. Black. I'm saying there's a difference between organized religion and spirituality. And what people get confused about Dr. King because at the end of it all, he was he and Malcolm were both in a spiritual quest. How do we get to that love we're talking about? Because think about it. You know, when you were saying that love, Ooh. I love Malcolm X. But we got to admit that Malcolm was brutal in his assessment of Dr. King. But when he went to Mecca, he made his pilgrimage Absolutely. and he came back a month before he was killed, Dr. Karen. He's in Alabama. Dr. King was in jail. He said to Karate Scott King, how can I help? Because he had I also think love that journey you talked about, those five steps, Absolutely. also had to do with a level of humility. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Most people Absolutely. are not willing to participate in the gift from tolerance to love because it means you have to um my people from down south, South Carolina, Dr. Black, we gotta humble ourselves. Because see, most oh, people think most people think humility is obedience. And so why wouldn't we think it's okay to be violent toward each other? Why wouldn't we think, why, why wouldn't we think it's okay to shoot people and bomb people, whatever it is, it could be America, middle, it could be anywhere in the world, because we think that that means that's humanity. That is anti-humanity and that's anti-love, that kind of behavior. And Kevin, it's because most of us are part of religions where God is violent. Yes. Woo. The so violence is deified. Yeah. Violence is made divine. Violence is seen as the right arm of righteousness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the churches that I grew up in, Dr. Black, I mean, they were fear-based, they were violent, and God was just a gangster. Absolutely. I'm like, I'm like well, what God is this that y'all talking about? James Baldwin, you know what I'm talking about, Dr. Black. Karen, in that moment, in, at the end of the first uh, part of the second essay in the fire next time. Fire next time, sure. When Baldwin says, this God ain't working, maybe it's time we get rid of this God and go get a new one. That's essentially what Dr. Black just said with those five steps Absolutely. toward love. Absolutely. This ain't working what we've been doing. We need to go here. We've been doing the same thing with race, toleration, acceptance, everything in America that we don't like. It starts out with think, us thinking that to tolerate it is an achievement. That's it. I mentioned uh, Nicole Avant. Uh, she's got a book called Think You'll Be Happy. And then she talks about her grandmother, her father's mm -hmm. mother, uh, who's church going. And she told her, you know, when you pray, just you should talk to God like he's your friend. Don't don't ask. Just talk. Mm -hmm. And she says, you know, the whole reason for religion was to gain character, not uh, uh, to be more like God, which is good. Mm -hmm. And if you're in it for anything else, then you're in it for the wrong reasons. So if your religion tells you to hurt people or to blow up buildings or to attack an abortion center or to deny the rights of women or gay people or whoever doesn't look or sound like you, then there's a question. Would God do this? And if the answer is no, then the message isn't from him. And you shouldn't do that task in his name. In fact, you shouldn't do it. Period. This is from her grandmother, from her book. I got the galley. Uh, it comes out tomorrow. Uh, when I read that, I was like, yes, yes, all of these people wearing, what would Jesus do? <laughs> you know, not this. You know, what would Allah do? Not this. not this. What would God do? Not this. What would Yahweh do? Not this. Not any of this. And if if your God would do this, then mm, I, the I don't know. know Karen, that you're not at, that, that most folks are not in love. It's when people say, "What would Jesus do?" Most of them are really answering, "What would they do?" <laughs> right, that wow. part. Because if, if you're asking the question, "What would Jesus do?" It's supposed to absolutely mess up your consciousness. Mm. It's supposed to transform your behavior. It's when you answer that question, it's supposed to absolutely make you so undone. See, most people are trying to be Christians. They're not trying to be Christ. Woo! <laughs> Say that again, Dr. Black. Man, listen, Karen, I was like, listen. <laughs> listen, if we would be Christ followers, we'd have another, we'd have another reality. 
And this is so critically, critically, critically important because ultimately, ultimately, love will answer all. It is true. It really That's is right. true. That's but true. most people have never experienced love. That part, Karen, Dr. Black, the, one of the things my wife and I talk about is that in our society, like you said, what we know best is America. This is who we are, where we're from. Where in our experiences have we had a consistent lesson in love? That's right. Unless we actually sort it out. Or in the case of you, Dr. Black, and you, Karen Hunter, I have decided I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm going to create the curriculum that I wish would have existed in the first place. That's right. Because Kevin, yes, even you when people ask questions of like my purpose, what most people are asking is, what will make me rich? Yeah. You That's not the question. That's no. not the question. No. That's not the question of purpose. The question of purpose is, what would I do on the planet by myself and have joy about it? You know, I'm trying not to start crying, Karen, and Dr. Black. When I was a child growing up in Jersey City, my mom and from South Carolina, I remember out of all the speeches they would play for us, I don't know why as a five-year-old in kindergarten, they played the mountaintop speech. It shook me to my core. Mm -hmm. It terrified me. Because, you know, Karen, we just we, we born at the same time. We don't have any memories of it, but that we went to school shortly after Dr. King was killed. You know, right. and over time, Dr. Black and Karen, as I got older and older, and I went through my hardcore Malcolm phase where I rejected Dr. King completely out of ignorance, you know what I mean? Because I really didn't study him at all. I had no idea who he was because of how he was presented. But once I listened to that speech for myself, and no human being, Dr. Black, Karen, we not me, not a, no one's perfect. No one. But what he had was an incredible love for the people and humility. And when he says, you know, I've been to the mountaintop, and I'm going to tell you, we as a people are going to get to the promised land. I was like, this is. This is the liberation theology that we actually need, which is this man, Karen, only had two or three suits. Am I right, Dr. Black? He Listen. barely had any shoes. When and he got the Nobel Peace Prize, he gave away all the money because he didn't want to look like he was benefiting off the movement. Because the man was walking in. His, how many suits did Jesus have? <laughs> mm. Karen. And, and what's deep is. Yeah. What's deep is we all keep mentioning Jesus's name. Everybody yep. in the world has been translated into every language. Everybody. Right? Everybody mentioned Jesus's name, but everybody wants more than Jesus had. To Dr. Black, your point, I made the mistake, or maybe it wasn't a mistake the other day. I just sent a note to a couple of folks. Can y'all pray for me that I get this Grammy nomination? One of the people I sent it to is a mentor of mine who's a profound spiritual being, an elder yeah. in New Jersey, in Princeton, Karen. You know what he said to me in response? Brother Powell, celebrate and honor the work that you did and don't Ooh. expect any awards. Know that the work that you did is more important than any award that you will ever get. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord have mercy. The reason, that, the reason that's profound, Kevin, the reason that's so profound, James Baldwin never won the Pulitzer. James never. Baldwin never won the National Book Award. James Baldwin never won it. And now James Baldwin stands for all practical purposes as our, as our biblical Christ. I'm I so glad you said that, Dr. Black, because Baldwin and Dr. King were both hated and told that they were crazy and no longer useful in the last parts of their lives. And we celebrate both of them because they both were right. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Come on. And righteousness was, is going to be ahead of rightness all the time. That's right. Karen, no one wants to be poor. No one wants to be homeless. But I'd rather just be a renter for the rest of my life if it means that some people could actually have a place to live and not live on the streets of New York, Atlanta, L.A., what I'm seeing right now. I know you're telling the truth, too. And I think everybody in this right now in this space and even I think most of the people listening feel the same way. And it and it's it's doable, right? It's doable, but it requires something of us. That's right. That's right. It requires Kim. something of us. Love is an action word. It requires Ooh. something of us. Love is an action. I posted my social media post this morning. Love is a practice, Dr. Black. It's on social media. I said love is I just found this quote and said love is a practice. I'm with this. Dr. Black said one 
tolerance. Two, and correct me if I'm wrong, Doctor Black was acceptance. Three was no, it was acceptance. Is that right? Right. Yep. Three was respect. Four was honor. Then fit five, you get to love. Most people think that that toleration mm. is their greatest achievement. You're at the bottom of your spiritual existence. Woo! Damn. And you know, I have said for a while, I don't even like the word tolerance. When people are like, we need to tolerate. I'm like, why would you just tolerate another human being? Why would you tolerate a group of people? And why would you merely accept them? And then why would you simply um, 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 honor them? <laughs> See, again, we're so deficient and we're so poor, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, mm. right? And we're poor in spirit. We're mm. poor in spirit. We really think that simply to say good morning to a person and not harm them is a spiritual act. Yeah. We really think we have done something gracious, to, right? As opposed to, as opposed to, you know what? This is my favorite dashiki. Hey, brother, come here. You can have it. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. see you only give a thing away when it means everything to you. Mm. Otherwise, you're throwing it away. Wow. I don't know if I could take all of this. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know what? Because. Everything both of you are saying requires a sitting in it for That's a minute. It. You That's know what right. I'm saying? Like this is not it's not it's not lecture hall with a pen. Like I want to I want to sit with I like I need to go for a walk. I need to go for a walk right now. But but look at Dr. Black's recent books and thank you brother for the work that you've been doing because it requires an opening up of self, Karen. You know what I mean? Because also not only are we not taught about love I mean, imagine Dr. Black and Karen, when we were in preschool, nursery school, kindergarten, first grade, children, we're going to talk about self-love. <laughs> we're going to talk about love. All we got was do unto others as you would have them do unto you. No one told you how to practice that. Yeah. And the flaw with that is that if you treat yourself badly, you're going to treat others badly. Absolutely. Because there's no Don't standard. Don't do unto me as you treat yourself. That, There's that, no standard. That, see, that won't work for me. No, don't treat me like you treat yourself. Treat me the way you imagine you treat God. And Dr. Black and Karen, that to me is the point of the work that y'all both are doing, that we're all trying to do. And don't just, really what does the world need to look like? Yeah. You know, we know what we're sitting in, you know, and what they want us to do, the stuff that we were quoting earlier, Karen, people want us to sit in all that confusion. That's a distraction. They want us to be confused. I mean, God bless Jada Pinkett Smith. God bless Will Smith. But all of that is a distraction. It's a distraction. Because at the end of the day, the question comes back to, do to Dr. Black. Well, is this love? With all it's funny all even about this. I love Jada and I, I love Will. Here's the thing. I think about Jada. Yeah. I'm thinking about Barack and, and Michelle. Yeah. We keep trying to find, we keep trying to find dreamed and superheroed examples of yeah. love that none of us thinks is real. <laughs> and, you know, to your point, Dr. Black, even Ozzy and Ruby, who we always dig up, if you read their, mm -hmm. if you actually go and read their joint autobiography right. years ago, they even separated for a period of time in the 60s to try to figure some things out. Yes. There's no perfect relationship, no matter what your gender identity is or identities are, whether it's a friendship relationship with yourself, it's a, Dr. Black said the word in the first hour, Karen, what is your process? Do you even have a process? Most of us, Karen, don't have a process. And, and, and people- hate What does that, that even mean, right? right. What is that? I'm, like, I'm, I'm thinking today, um, 866, and we're going to get to the callers, I promise. And Kevin, you're going to get to your yoga and your workout, I promise. <laughs> it's easier for what, 8255. I was thinking today, how many of us, we, we have our work, we got our, you know, our relationships, our kids, our job, you know, and there's no time for personal development, right? So we'll, we'll vision board, you yeah. know, we may, we may read our books or go to church and think that, but that, that kind of work is so all consuming that it, it, it needs right. space and constant it tending. Does. Like we tend to our garden, right? You don't just leave, but in, and it can't just be five minutes a day. I know you got your, right. your time in a day. It is an, everyday thing. So when do we have time to develop personally? When do we make time for that? See, now well, that's the issue. 
The question is not when do we have it, when do we make it? And the fact that we don't make it is a sign to you that we, we don't really want it. We don't really, we want the fruit of it, but we don't necessarily want the process. It's like everybody wants food, but nobody wants to grow it. Uh. Or cook it, or, or cook, cook it. it. <laughs> and I love the analogy, even if you're planting seeds. See, if you're planting seeds, and if you're hungry today, you'll starve before you get a harvest. Mm. The food you eat today has got to be the seeds you planted last harvest. Mm. Mm. So you got to constantly be growing, as you're, as you're saying, and it is process. It's yeah. pro and, and you got to sit with a thing, and that seed has got to germinate in the earth as the sun and the soil and the rain are conversing about its possibilities. You know, Dr. Black and Karen, I, if I can find it, I will, I will text it to both of you all. I stumbled into something that Kobe Bryant was saying uh, in 2008, 2009, how he and his wife went to Paris after they lost the championship to the Boston Celtics. And it was tied to your point. They were looking at plant life and the sun and how it taught him just watching nature, how to be a different kind of leader, which is very mm -hmm. profound. You know, and, and, and to your point, Dr. Black, and I'll say this, Karen, aloud, I've been saying in my head for a while now, grind culture is destructive. Even That's using right. the word grind is destructive. Grind. That's right. And I know we have a vernacular as black people that becomes the American vernacular. But grind culture by its very definition means never slow down and create a process and watch some seeds grow. That's right. That's you know, right. It means you just got to keep going, keep going. And how is it manifested in a simple level, Karen? And, 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 and Dr. Black, when we text people, we don't even say, hello, good morning, how you doing? We go right into what we need. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's when right. When I text y'all, I'm like, how y'all doing? Hey, how y'all? Because I'm like, one, my mom and them is from South Carolina. It's just basic manners. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then two, I'm like, I don't, it's back to what you were saying earlier, Karen. We need to check our humanity. Is your humanity so controlled by us? Androids and iPhones and social media that you can't even say hello, how are you doing? Then how the hell are you gonna care about shootings right. in your community or people getting bombed overseas if you can't even say hello, how you doing to people or even acknowledge with a head nod a homeless person in your community? If you ain't got a coin to give them, at least look at them and it's, I see your existence. That's right. I feel you. That's right. And, and I'm glad you said that about grind culture, Kevin, because also grind culture is very arrogant. And Woo! I'm Wow. Grind culture is arrogant because grind culture presupposes that I can do in a day what took y'all two weeks to do. Woof. Wow. Grind culture presupposes that if that I'm so I'm so excellent and so special that actually I can do at the last minute what everybody else has been working on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, still have the same fruit. I, I mean, you know, and Dr. <laughs> Dr. Black knows what I'm talking about, Karen. One of the blessings of Atlanta as a Mecca is we were young people coming up, am I right, Dr. Black, as writers, as thinkers, whatever we, we call ourselves. And we got to see Maya Angelou, Amir Baraka, and oh, yeah, and all the, yeah. I would never go up to any of those elders and be like, I'm a writer just like you. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm <laughs> You can no say you're way. a writer, but yo, Maya just had 40 years in the game. Baraka just had 40 years in the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have not created for color girls. Anything on this level of that. How could I even fix my mouth to say stuff like that? Nowadays, whoo. And I'm not even and talking about you, Go ahead, Doc. And, and when you grind, what you have, what, what you have is a mess. Because yeah. the quality, you have to compromise the quality. That's it. In order to try to fit it into the small notion of time that you're trying to, if you will, manipulate. So if somebody comes up to me and says, hey, Dr. Black, I wrote a book I want you to read. You know, I wrote it in a month. I already know what it is. <laughs> I mean, isn't, isn't that what they put into the grinder, the, the, the spare parts? There it is. And, and, <laughs> there you know, it is. Isn't that what they put? You, there it you, is. <laughs> into it. the grinder? Yeah. See, most people don't take the metaphor all the way out. There, there it is right there. there is. That's right. When you finish grinding, you have mush. You got mush. Or I mean, or, or, I mean or yeah, that's it. Me. You don't right. get a Dr. Black and that level of scholarship and level of critical thinking and ideas without years of work. You don't get that. You don't get your level of journalism, Karen Hunter, without years of work. And you your know, level of writing, Kevin. We, we all know. You know, we were just talking about this. Just writing a book and all of this, baby, you have, when you tell me, I'm going to take on this endeavor and write a book, 
it's going to take something out of you. You're going to have to exchange part yeah. of your life force for it. Yeah. Baby. People want fast results. And I think it's all it's all connected, Karen. It's all, all connected. What we're seeing, all the violence, all the madness, you know, it, it but it's doing I keep this is the people should see killers of the of the flower moon because that's what the indigenous people are simply saying, y'all. Hey, y'all, this is what happens when we lose our foundation, our roots, and think that this other Kool-Aid is better than our Kool-Aid. This other fried chicken is better than our fried chicken. Nah, man. Nah. No one can make fried chicken like you can. No one can make Kool-Aid like you can. Trust your own thing. Wow. Can we uh I'm gonna challenge you. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna drop something that just dropped in my spirit, Kevin. Uh I like uh a book on grow culture. Grow culture. Mm. Grow culture. Let's make that, let's put that into the Better grind let's culture, grow culture. Into- grind grow culture. culture. Yeah. Dr. Grow Black culture. writes books too. <laughs> <laughs> and Karen Hunter writes well, books too. We well, might have to do it together. Well, all right, I'll save it for myself. I just feel like Well, you know what? Or it could be an anthology. <laughs> we each get a chapter. And get okay, some- I'm down with that. Okay. I love you. Uh, I love you enough for you to go love yourself, my brother go. Kevin Powell. We'll, we'll do that. I'm so grateful. Uh, maybe next Monday we can uh, reconvene and have this relationship conversation because I'm fascinated by what you think about uh, how we get to healthy relationships. But I know it starts with us. But thank you for being here today. Love, love you both care. so much. Love Give me you some so love. Much. Give me some love. I mean, had me crying up in here. <laughs> yeah. Love you, man, uh, so much. You're so love awesome. Y'all. Says that she loves me. Isn't it lovely when the one who loves things is the one?